Hello everybody! This is my first stream for WizKids Miniatures and we have a nice little selection to paint today. Um, I know this is probably um, morning time for any of my uh, US friends and I do apologise. Um, but uh, Sunday is supposed to be a relaxing day. <laughs> Um, what we've got today is we have some, let me get my focus in so you can see it again. Uh, we have oxen. We have two oxen. Um, we have the unicorn. This is um, from Pathfinder. We have the bounty board. So you can have start your adventures and grab a grab a bounty from the board. We have a troll, and we have an owl bear. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is just doing the basic blocking of colours. Um, but if you love Dungeons and Dragons, I want to show you how you can get a fantastic reference. I mean, you can get the D and D monster manual for all your miniatures but what I really love is the monster cards um, and these are the, the monster cards and each one, one of these monster cards tells you all the stats of the monster and gives you all the details and all the juicy gossip about these miniatures um, so what we what we've, what we got here we got two definitely from D&D &D. so we got the troll and we got the owl bear so they should be in our pack and what it is it gives you fantastic a color reference chart as I call it so I always keep these handy in my room so I can just flick through all the the um, different pictures to find the miniature that I'm painting to do with Dungeons and Dragons there's the owl bear look kind of a purpley purpley white color so I'm gonna plonk him over there let me see if I can find the troll quickly 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 Mm. These are beautiful and they're laminated as well, good for in your workshop for painting. You get any paint on these, you can just wipe them off. They're really nice. Um. Oh, there is quite a lot to go through there. <laughs> Come on, troll. Oh, they're beautiful. There you are, and there's the troll. <laughs> I read again. Like, yeah, these are my special, special, um, special cards. <laughs> okay then. Right. Let's um tell you how to prep up your WizKids miniatures because uh, they can be a little tricky. It's supposed to you're supposed to be able to paint them straight from the box, but as you all know, I do not lie about anything I do. Um, so I am going to tell you that they're not that easy to paint straight out of the box if you want to have a nice paint work. Now you'll need a crafting knife and you'll need to check the whole of the miniature. They have been um, primed with Vileco primer and that is really a good thing but um, what you'll find is you'll have little mold lines still coming through on the miniature so what you need to do is scrape off those mold lines with a craft knife otherwise they will show once you've painted your miniature. I mean, you don't have to do it, but uh, once you've painted that miniature, you will want to do it because they they will show through. Um, especially if you use um, ink washes like I do, because the ink washes uh, and dry brushing, they pick out every single raised area. So if you have any raised flashing um, or mold lines on your miniatures, you need to take them away Otherwise, they will show on every single one of your minis. Um, okay, let's have a look at this ox. See on the belly there, got a little line going across. Simple enough. We just go with a knife and we can just we can just scrape that off. Now, what's going to happen here is I've scraped that line away, but I've also taken off that primer. 
Now, if you want to get the same primer that they use for your miniatures, um, it's the Surface Primer Grey from Vallejo. Um, and you can get this from Mighty Lancer Games and all your online shops. Um, so I got this nice big pot and I just paint over if I've taken off too much paint. So I'll just check this one over as well. Normally um, it's just, just a few tiny little bits, nothing major, but uh, if you've been painting for quite a long time, um, you will want to remove these mold lines. Especially on the main details, like on the face, so there's a there's one there on the nose, so you don't want that a line showing on the nose. So we'll just take that one off. I'll just check this one's nose. There we go. Let's go to the troll. And once again, we'll just take off the mold lines in certain areas of the troll. Um, you can also see this one's got a tiny little gap just here. Now, with little gaps, um, I have my Valeco putty. Um, a renegade Shank, um, he keeps me in supply of this putty. <laughs> he keeps on sending me little bottles of putty, which is amazing. Um, but again, this is fantastic stuff. It's just like toothpaste. And um, like you use your two-part mix for your greens, green stuff, uh, this is a, a liquid putty that turns into like a hard plastic. And it's very, very simple to use. What we do, we just squeeze it into our little gaps. And it fills the gap in perfectly. And it's so much easier to use than um, using green stuff or anything like that because it just goes all the way into all those gaps and fills it in you don't have to mix it's just straight from the bottle nice and easy there we are see? and that gap's gone and it doesn't take long to dry either hello Eve Winterfang <laughs> I wasn't um, I actually wasn't expecting anybody today because it was Sunday and it was it's like three o'clock in the afternoon but obviously um, you are wanted to pop in and say hi Hello, Mighty Lancer Games. Right, okay. Um, let's make a start. Now, what we're going to do is just get all the basics done. Um, the unicorn, I am starting with white. So we'll get the white out on our palette first because we'll be using that for mixing colours um, anyway. So is everybody having a lovely Sunday? Have they have you all got roast dinners and beef dinners and pork dinners and all these delicious juicy roast potatoes and oh peas and gravy and oh pudding? Oh, oh I'm starving already. <laughs> uh, Claire said to me before the sh before the show, should we have lunch before or after? And I said after. And now my stomach's like. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, basic uh, white. Oh, and by the way, for all my Wiz Kids miniatures, I am going to be sticking with um, Vallejo paints. Um, for my Reaper miniatures, I use the MSP Army Painter um, Games Workshop. But for the Vallejo, as Vallejo are licensed with WizKids, um, I'm trying to stick with using the Vallejo brand for painting my WizKids miniatures. Um, that does not mean any other paint will not work. All the paints are the same. Um, I just collect paints and like to use the paints that are with each miniature. Um, so if I say white, it could be a white, you could use it from MSP, Army Painter, any any company you desire. There's no particular brand. Um, I 
<laughs> yes, Renegade Shank. You should have sent me more cookies. <laughs> Cookie monster. Now, for the unicorn, the unicorn is super easy to paint. Uh, what we're going to be doing with the unicorn, we're just giving it some uh, coats of white paint. Um, and we'll be going over with a grey ink wash, and that'll give our shading for the unicorn. And then it's a simple little dry brush over the highest areas back with our white, and you've got a beautiful looking unicorn um, and super easy and fast to paint I won't be able to show you the bases today um, because we won't have enough time um, because what I do with all my bases as you probably know if you watch my other streams and YouTube channel is I'll add gravel to the base um, and finish off the base that way with some nice PVA glue, sand from the beach or um, you can get modeling sand, any sand you desire to be honest, little, little rocks work perfect, little seashells, you can get all sorts of stuff. Um, I try to get as much as I can from my dog walks, you know, from the beaches and stuff like that, because um, it saves money and it also makes the hobby even more exciting when you go for your little walks and you're looking for things that you can add to your base, like little twigs and, you know, lichen. So that's that first coat for our unicorn, very simple. And we'll probably do another little coat in that to highlight that. Giving our brush a wash. And we'll move on to those oxen. <laughs> Renegade Shank. Feeding, feeding the masses. Awesome guy. Okay, now for the oxen, we're going to go with chocolate brown. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of black to my chocolate brown because I want the oxen to have a really deep colour. I want it um, much darker. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put some black on our palette as well. If you love Dungeons and Dragons, um, Whiz Kids are definitely... Um, a good brand to go with <laughs> um, because you're getting the miniatures directly from the books and all the adventures and stories um, so I do recommend these miniatures totally um, they are if you you know if you do love your Dungeons and Dragons you're not you're not gonna go far wrong with these miniatures um, I do recommend that you add bases to all your miniatures um, I'm, I'm a bit of a stickler when it comes down to bases. I have to have a base done on all my miniatures. All my goblins know that a miniature is not finished until there is a base added. Um, I don't, it's Tim in the chat. There we go. If Tim's in the chat, chat he adds bases to all his miniatures. Um, he's a good goblin. Ah, oh, Muse's touch. <laughs> Muse's touch. I said it correctly, didn't I? Welcome, welcome. Now it's quite simple to add different shades as you're painting. If you uh, paint fast enough, like I'm doing here. Now this brown is still going to be wet, and there's um, a way to paint, and it's called wet blending. And wet blending is simply you are adding colours to your paints while the other paint is still wet. And if you master wet blending, you can probably do just about anything involving painting miniatures. And what I'm going to show you here is 
add in a tiny bit of black to this brown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just at the bottom here. I'm going to add a tiny bit of black, take some off of my tissue, and I'm going to blend that in with that brown, and it will go straight up on the hump of the oxen just to blend in with the hairy bits. <laughs> Hairy bits. I, think, I don't know the correct words for it all. And again on the other side, starting off with our brown, just touch in a tiny bit of that black, and we're going to wet blend that up the back of the oxen to the top of the head. And then add a tiny bit more black for that top, and we are done. And you've got a nice little variation in colour going on, going on to the top of the Beastie. Now then, I shall go back and add the rest of the brown. And I shall show you that again because I didn't realise I was so far away from the camera and I apologise for that. Uh, you're all there like, what's he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> okay, just finishing off the head. And the underbelly and just going in the ears let me just finish off that black on the top there just going there we go lovely and that's our basic start for our oxen I'll quickly do the other one so you get an idea of how I did that wet blending on his back. Right, so what we're doing is we're going straight over the whole mini with our brown. Actually, let me take some paint off his brush. It's way overloaded. Way overloaded. Hi, Tommy. How are you doing? <laughs> or wild man. Yeah. Okay, so we're going back onto this miniature. Yeah, sometimes you, you need to keep an eye on your brushes. It's very easy to suddenly realise your brush is overloaded and instead of putting the paint on nice and evenly, you end up with big blobs of paint because you've got too much paint on your brush. And we all do it. Especially when you're doing your base cut, cut coats um, or you're blocking in other colours because you, you want to quickly get those filled in because that's like the boring part of painting is just blocking in all the colours. So um, we try to fly through these as fast as possible and get to the exciting bit. But um, if you take your time and just do a nice even coat of paint you'll end up with a very beautiful looking miniature. As you can see, uh, today I am not using my fingers um, and that's because I'm doing the basic painting. I use my hands as a st for stability when I go into more detail. Uh, so when I'm just painting like this, I can get away with just painting straight onto the miniature because I don't mind if I go over onto the other parts of the miniature because everything is going to be repainted and touched up at a later date. Uh, but it's very important to learn your hand movements and coordination um, and it really helps you to steady your brush using both hands when you are painting. But I will show that at a later date. Okay, so this is our little oxen, number two. Let's just go straight around his face here. So we can finish his face first. Get under his little chin. There we are. 
Okay, so let me show you that um, little bit of wet blending into the dark on the fur again. And let's see if we can get me a bit closer. Okay, let me get the paint off again. Now I'm going to add a tiny bit of water to this brown because it's starting to dry. There we go. So what I've done, I've put some water on my brush and I've just added it to the brown on my palette and I'm just mixing it in a little bit because it's starting to dry up. And all we're doing now is going back onto the fur or hair of the beastie and we're going around the edge keeping that paint nice and wet and then we're adding a touch of black while it's still wet and we're blending that into the brown and that moves up the back of the hair like so and gives a lovely little shade to that hair and gives a nice dark effect and we'll do the same on the other side I'm going to start at the bottom, I'm going to add the brown, keeping it wet, and then we're just going to add a tiny bit of black, and we blend that into that brown, moving our brush up the back of the oxen. And then when we get to the top, we add a little bit of brown, I'm going to mix it in with the other brown here, the black mixed in with the brown, and that's going to be for the top and that'll be a nice dark, dark. It's not pure black, but it gives a nice effect and a dark effect to the top of the oxen. Very simple to do. And like I say, once you've mastered wet blending, you can practically do any type of shading on any miniature. It's very simple but it does take a little bit of time to master the wet blending technique. Uh, but if you practice at it, you'll absolutely love it. Okay, so there's our two little oxen. Mm, let's go on to the troll, shall we? <laughs> right then, for the troll, I am using dark green. Um, when you do all your miniatures, I always start with a darker color and then I can work on my highlights with lighter colors and it works really well that way. <laughs> yeah, Tommy's an awesome guy, eh? It's strange how um, all my patrons um, have met up all from around the world and we've turned into just a really nice family of people that we can talk to and trust. Um, my, my best friends are people um, I've never really met. I mean, how crazy is that? Sounds like my cat's gone nuts up in the back. Okay, so for the, for the troll, we are going for that lovely green and again this is our troll and as you can see they've they've taken the they've taken the miniature directly from the the, the book from the games uh, you know they've copied all the dreadlocks the claws I mean so it's a very good uh, there's no no doubt in they've done a very good sculpt of what we see in our games um, and this is what I love about these cards you can check to see if they've done it correctly <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, by the way, these cards that I've got, they're, they're, they're these, the the monster cards. Um, I I actually bought them for my partner Claire, and um, I <laughs> I gave her them for Christmas, <laughs> and then they disappeared into my workshop, and she hasn't seen them since. <laughs> They are honestly these are fantastic if, if you want reference material for your miniatures. Good stuff. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Okay, I am going to get this skin on. Again, very simple. We're just going straight over the whole of the skin, including all the little um little nails and face. Um and I'm not worried about making a mess. 
because we shall be going over all the miniature with our other colours. And that's the thing about miniature painting, is not to worry about making a mess. Because um, we all make a mess, uh, but you can touch it up. It's You can fix it. You can fix it. You can fix it. This is a beautiful green. I really do like this green colour. It's beautiful. It's a perfect green for me. Be interesting to see how far I can get today. Uh, like I say, I'm, going, I'm keeping all my shows to an hour. Um, I think anything longer than an hour is a little bit too much. Um, especially when my YouTube videos are about 15 minutes. Um, so it's, it, it's good for me to have an hour show. Um, because longer than an hour, and I think my brain would probably explode. <laughs> Yes, only happy accidents. Happy trees. <laughs> Did you know that um, I think 90% um, of uh, his paintings all had happy little trees in it? Happy little trees. But uh, the joy of painting is relaxing. Um, you know, when you start painting, uh, you do go into your own little world and you can do whatever you want to do. I know I am following the D&D &D guides for the painting color scheme, um, but that's because I want to. Um, it doesn't matter what color you paint your miniatures. And I've said this many times before, you can paint them whatever you want. There is no strict rule about how you should paint your miniatures. And I can't I can't stress that enough. If you like pinks and purples, then you paint your miniatures in pinks and purples. Um, you know, if you want the Teletubbies, you, you paint them the Teletubbies. <laughs> Fluffy bunny rabbits. I'm only saying that because of Claire next door. <laughs> okay, so we've got a nice little base coat of this beautiful green. I'm just going to finish off the face there. Straight in. Boom, boom. He's about covered for his main. There we go. Okay. So there's our. So we've got our troll, unicorn, two oxen. Just need the owl bear and that sign. Now, the reason I'm doing quite a few different miniatures is because hopefully this will be dry. It's still tacky, but it'll be dry by the time I've finished the last one and then we can go to the next stage. That's my method in the madness, as they say. <clears throat> right then, let's get some more tissue. Hi Andy, how you doing? Just have a little drinky of water. Oh, 
Okay, we're going to start on the owl bear now. Now the owl bear will be doing in um, a two tone. We're, again, we're going with we're going with flat brown for this one, and I'm going to be using. No, I'm not actually. I'm going straight for purple, aren't I? Oof, oof. I nearly did the owl bear my way, where I'd like to do in brown, but I'm trying to follow this picture, so we're going to go straight for purple. And Claire would have gone crazy if I didn't paint it in purple. <laughs> I, Tommy, I have tried, I have tried to get uh, Scorpla to come online with me. Um, she is a very, very shy lady. Uh, even though she does all these D and D games, um, she, it's not, it's not easy doing what this where you're live, and it's, it is, it is very scary. And um, I mean, I'm gonna try and keep nagging her to come online. Because I want her to do a little paint paint along with me, and I think that would be beautiful. Uh, so all I can do is keep on nagging, and if you all keep nagging, Scorpler, then she won't have a choice. Right. Okay. So what we're going to do with our owl bear is we're going to kind of do this, but with wet blending. So quite a simple way to do this. And it's lots of paint and lots of white. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put my purple, it's quite a runny purple, into the deepest areas and work my way around. And again, this is um, a speed paint. So the paint should stay wet long enough for me to do my wet blending all around the miniature. Now what I'm going to be doing is wet blending the white into the purple. And this will give out all the different effects I want around the miniature. So I'm just going into the deepest recesses with this purple color, with this purple color. And then I shall add white and this will give us a tone in variation going around the mini. Right, what I'm going to do now is I am going to start adding that white. I'm taking some off. I'm just placing it into the back and we work our way with that white around. Almost like a purple rainbow going around the miniature. And what we're doing on the ends of the wings, we go to the whitest point. Bringing back some color, adding some purple, just pushing it into the purples and you get a lovely blending effect going along the wings. Same with the back again, adding a little bit of white, pushing the paint into the original blend and you get a lovely effect on the back of the birdie. And again, I'm going back into the purple, just making sure that paint is still wet. Taking the paint off, adding a little bit of that white and we're gonna fly straight in, straight back into it. Awesome stuff. And going around all the areas that you've just been over, nice and fast, blending that white straight in with the purple. And we're pulling the paint up the miniature into the rest of the owl bear. Same on this side. We're pulling that purple into the white I'm bringing it to the back of the owl bear. Again, adding more white, pulling the purple up. And for the final, I want to go much lighter, and we're going along that back and just blending in the lighter white on the back of the miniature. And you've got a lovely, beautiful tone of purple going all over the fur. 
Okay, so I'm going to quickly finish this off. And I'll keep on talking while I'm doing it. So again, I'm adding that white to the purple and pulling it. The main thing with wet blending is to keep going while it's wet. As soon as it dries, you're going to lose that lovely effect. So you've got to keep adding more white. Come on. There you go. A bit more white. There you go. That should do me. Okay. So once again, add in that white. Go into the edge of the darkest purple and pulling that purple away. And the same again. Beautiful. Right, I'm just going to add some more of the purple to the darkest areas at the top because that's starting to dry. And just here and just there. Taking the paint off my brush, going straight into that white. And I'm pulling the purple with the white out. Adding more white as I go so you're getting a lighter tone going up the arm or the wing. At the top of the wing, I want it at its brightest point. So I'm just making, adding more white, sorry. I'm adding more white to the top. So when we reach to apex of that wing, it's much brighter. And at the edges of the wing, we're going straight into that white, adding that purple, and you'll get a lovely, beautiful effect going down that wing, like so. <clears throat> okay, now for the underbelly, it's going to be dark, of course, because that's where the you, there's no light. So we're going straight into the purple on the underbelly, and we're just placing that all the way around, and we're keeping that nice and dark. Moving on to the back of the legs and under the arms. Okay, let's move on to the feet. And just again, we're keeping certain areas you want to keep a lot darker. So all the shading is your darkest recesses. Um, like just here behind the wing, we're going to keep that purple. I'm going to keep that nice and dark. You can actually add a tiny bit of black to that. In fact, I will. I'm going to add a little bit of black to that purple on my tissue there. And just add a bit more purple. It's too, too dark. And I'm just going to add that to the back of the wing because that's going to be a place where the light won't be shining. So we're going to keep that darker than the rest of the miniature. And the same on the other wing underneath here. This will go for that dark purple as well. So we keep that nice and dark because that's how it would naturally be with a light source shining down on the top of the miniature. There we are. And lastly, the last leg here. Just under there. And we need to do those claws. So I'm going back into the white with the claws and I'm pulling the paint again from that purple as it's still wet. The top of the knuckles of the claws I am going to highlight with the white. And this is all wet blended. And we're just going to go straight across, just like that. And then we're going back down into the purple and keeping it a little bit darker towards the end of the claws. Just like that. Right, so let's start with our face. Now our face, we are going to start the opposite way around. We're going to take our paint off our brush. And we shall go straight into the white. And we'll start directly in the middle on the beak. And then we're going to go into that purple and start pulling away from the white with our purple.
nice and darker towards the ends. Just going underneath. And again, on the other side, keep it nice and dark on the one side. And just there we go. Add a little bit more white there, just in the middle. There you go. That's my boy. Uh, <laughs> good, 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 good. So there we are. This is my little owl bear so far. As you can see, it looks fantastic with the purples. I think Claire will enjoy having that on her little desktop once it's finished. But see how fast and easy it is when you do wet blending. I mean, the whole miniature, I don't actually need to add an ink wash or anything to this miniature because I've done it like that okay let's move on to our last item um, I haven't actually checked what time it is what time are we on oh <laughs> Ooh. I better speed up okay so let's move on to our little sign post this is your what's it called again the bounty board the bounty board now very simple brown <laughs> not, not difficult to paint so we're going for the browns and then that'll be dry brush to bring out the highlights and that'll have a brown ink wash and all these paper will be painted in like a skull skull brown and then that'll be given a brown ink wash to give it an old rusticky um, old look so very simple to do. Uh, with the um with the wood, what I like to do with wood again is give a nice dark start starter coat, as I should say, um, and then I will use something like brown sand and give it a nice dry brush of brown sand, um, and that'll pick out all those lovely details of the wood effects. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm not going around each page. I'm just going to go straight over the whole miniature in brown. Um, many painters make the mistake of taking hours going around like this there'll be the, the, the you'll, you'll go like this and like this and you'll you'll try to miss all the bits and then you'll paint these bits in afterwards um just get the paint on <laughs> just get the paint on paint over the whole thing because you'll be you can it's easier to actually paint over the top of the miniature rather than go around all that pages individual um, so just get a nice even coat when you're painting wood uh, follow the grain because that will get all the paint into all those little bits of the grain on the work there we go um, because what we'll do is we'll paint those big pieces of paper later Oh, while I'm, um, well, before the show ends, let me tell you about um, Tuesday. Um, Tuesday on my Twitch um, is at 7 o'clock. And uh, Tule is coming onto the show um, because it's my three-year anniversary of Patreon. Um, now, Tule helped me start my Patreon. She did all my logos for me and... Um, you know she she was such a supportive person just like Scorpio is um, and she helped me to start doing what I'm doing because before I, I I was just paint I was just posting pictures every day onto um, Twitter and um, I was too scared to start patreon and um, it was too late and uh, Michael Carroll Michael Carroll is also a patron um, they gave me the confidence to, you know, press that button to say, you know, become a patron. Um, and now, I, and now I'm doing it full time. So yeah, very, very special people, all of them. Uh, but Tule helped me so much with all my logos, um, and everything. And she's also learnt 
the painting from myself and she's actually won some of my goblin competitions um, so I thought she would be the perfect candidate to be on the show to celebrate three years of being a patron you know it's it's an amazing thing I mean I never would have dreamed that one day I would be self-employed working from home doing something I loved I mean that is, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing and all you people have made that possible for me um, and I cannot thank you all enough um, life is hard um, but you've made this one guy a happy bunny honestly it's you really have it's uh, it's been a tough road um, but I finally found happiness you know took took long enough that's for sure okay so we have all our primey primey <laughs> all our primes and blocking in the colors done our owl bear is looking absolutely stunning I'm very happy how that came out um, and that, that's got some really beautiful different shades on it um, okay I'm still a bit tacky tacky mm. sometimes the paint dries super fast sometimes it's like ha ha you got the wait. What's the goat thing about? <laughs> oh, the goat. <laughs> That's from my D&D &D games, isn't it? <laughs> okay, I think this is dry enough to put on some wash. Now, Vileco washes. Absolutely beautiful washes. Now, if you paint anything in white, um, for example, Sour Man, um, if you like painting your wizards and you want that white coat, you know, or the horses, what I'm going to show you now is this, and this is your grey, grey from Valeco, and it is absolutely amazing stuff. If you've never used a grey wash and you struggle painting whites, this will be a blessing for all of you so give it a good shake because it does um, settle yes they did start on the farm um, on the farm uh, we had uh, Jill Jill the goat uh, little Jill uh, we had Lamsey the lamb <laughs> And we had a, we had, um, I had a chicken, I had a pet chicken on the farm, and um, it was called Clucky. And uh, one, uh, one Sunday, uh, we just finished our roast, <laughs> roast chicken, and uh, I remember saying to my mum and dad, "Where's Clucky? Where's Clucky? <laughs> you just ate Clucky, so I just, I just eat, I just eaten my pet." But that's what happens when you live on the farm. <laughs> Clucky. Okay, let me get this uh, <laughs> ink wash onto the miniature. Okay, let me find a good old Mikey brush. Okay, simple. All you're doing is you've got a nice fluffy brush to pick up the paint. And this is as simple as it can get. You just add the Add the grey ink wash to the whole miniature. This will go into all the recesses. And it will give you instant shading. And for white, it is the bomb. Believe me, it works absolutely amazing. So we'll just go over here. 
all over the beautiful unicorn. I did not ink wash. Now, once that ink wash has been added, like so, we go over and just take the paint off the brush. What we do now is we take off. Hi, Coy, how you doing? Um, we just take the ink wash off with some cotton buds. Cotton buds are another amazing item if you're using ink washes. And what we do is on the highest areas of this beautiful, we just take off the ink using our cotton bud. Now this is a fantastic thing. It picks up any pooling, but it also can save you a lot of time on your highlighting because you can actually use it as a way to highlight your miniatures. You're just taking off the paint or the ink wash on the highest areas and letting that white shine through. As it's exactly the same as what you'd add the ink and then later on you add in the highlights. What you're doing here is you're adding the highlights by taking away the ink. So it's the reverse effect without adding the extra paint. And all we're doing is going around all these areas. It's almost like a stippling effect as well. You can make some really nice effects by just going like this with the tip. And it'll give a nice, um, you know, like on the horses where they've got the different patterns. And it works really well. And you can do this with all, you can do this with browns, blacks, all sorts of different colours. Uh, blacks, I'm not mainly, I <laughs> can't do it with blacks. <laughs> but uh, whites and browns. Uh, tans, um, it works fantastic. Um, and as you can see, I mean, it's, it looks great. It's a fantastic way to get your tabletop miniatures blasted out, looking awesome, fast, quickly. I mean, once that's dry, I'll still be adding um, a little bits of white, white dry brushes. Um, but as you can see, for a simple horse effect, I mean, that's gone from plastic to horsey. <laughs> what do you mean, oh my God, I, I said cotton bud. It is a cotton bud, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Did you see what I've done with my owl bear with the purples? I, I'm really happy with this. Um, it's coming on nice. I mean, when you think it's just your starter, just your basic starter prime coat, I think it's all coming on very, very nicely. Remember to keep an eye on your ink washes as well. I can see on my horse there's a little bit of ink pool in there. Um, you don't want pooling on your miniatures because pooling with ink wash looks disgusting. It, um, it makes it look cheap and shoddy. So you have to try and keep an eye on your ink washes and just take away any excess ink with your paintbrush or your cotton bud. Okay, I think I've got enough time to... I got six minutes. All right, I got... What can I do for my six minutes? My last six minutes. Um, this is wet, this is wet, this is wet. Um. Oh, Q-tip. No, it's cotton bud. <laughs> it's a cotton bud. Right, that's wet. We can do something with the oxen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show you the highlighting on the oxen. Now, again, we've got some this brown sand. Um, actually, no, we're going back to the chocolate brown because I don't want it too light. We just want to highlight the muscle tones on the oxen around the bum and the legs. So I'm just finding a little spot there. I am going to add a little bit more white. I do like adding my white and blacks. I mean, you can do anything with your colours. If you've got black and white, you're, you're set. 
Okay, so I am going to get a little medium dry brush. I'm going to take my oxen. I'm adding some of that brown to my tissue. And I'm adding a tiny bit of white to that brown. Can you see that color there? It's just, it's a beautiful, nice, nice brown color. That's nice. And all we're going to do is go over the highest areas of the oxen around the thighs, belly, buttocks, buttocks, rump, rump steak. There you go. <laughs> and we're just highlighting different parts of the beastie. You see that coming up now? Absolutely beautiful. It just gives the perfect tone to that skin. Super fast and easy. Over the nose. There you go. Look at that. How nice is that? You can see in the recesses now you've got the darker and the lighter skin going around. Keeping slightly darker on certain places. Um, but the highest areas we're just adding a lighter brown and it just makes that bison pop a little bit more. And we do the same with this one. Just going over the thighs, buttocks, <laughs> buttocks. <laughs> oh, I've lost it. And um, okay, and over the nose. There we go. See how easy that was. I mean, all we've done so far, we've added our primer coats and we've done a little bit of highlighting. But as you can see, the miniatures are already looking fantastic compared to when we started and this is the beauty of painting um, if you do three or four miniatures at the same time you can move on to the next miniature and move on to the next miniature and you can get the job done and it's just a beautiful thing to paint your miniatures um, it's a, it's such a fantastic hobby <laughs> remember to always make sure your brushes are really clean now dry brushes are the worst because when you use paint for dry brushing uh, you often um, don't wash your brush well enough because you don't think there's any paint on the brush but in fact there's hidden paint all the way down the stem of your brush so your dry brushes are really important to give them a really good wash keep just adding water to the brush and then you just keep dry brushing on your tissue until it's a clear until it's totally clear and then you know there's no paint left on your brush so now i know my brush is nice and clean and it's ready for another day Well, I hope you all enjoyed my very first WizKids video. Um, I do love painting WizKids miniatures. I love painting Rube miniatures, as you all know. Um, and these two are my favorite companies. And I think it's amazing um, to be able to paint all these miniatures in front of you. And each show, I am actually building more and more confidence. And it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic feeling. Um, it took me a very, very long time to be able to start doing these type of things um, and I'm glad I have and it is a learning curve for me as well so I just want to say thank you to every single one of you for popping in and saying hello I wasn't actually sure anybody would turn up today on Sunday I thought you'd all be busy doing your own thing but obviously you came to say hello and that's fantastic so lots of love to all of you have a lovely rest of the weekend and I hope to see you all on Tuesday night. So good night. Good night. <laughs> so I'll say I'll say um, I'll say I'll see you later. <laughs>
Good night. I was doing so well and I ruined it at the end. 